Well, everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Wasteland Talks, my weekly talk show now, because I needed another show. And I'm joined by Vinny, my friend of 11 what, years, almost 11 and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here to talk about the Oscar nominations for this year, because this past Tuesday, just hanging out, having the live stream on which was kind of awkward. <laughs> I, I don't know if you tried to catch any of it. There's a lot of like buffering issues and like kind of felt a little staged comedy I, and stuff like that. I, 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 di I didn't see the live stream. I, like, I, I, I just caught the list when it hit, when it hit online. But um, I, I heard that they, uh, I heard the announcers butchered several of the, several of the, of the names when they were announcing them. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> um, but Vinny, so what are like your general feelings about the overall Oscar nominations for this year? Uh, overall, I think the nomination. Over overall, I do I do like the nominees. Um, you know, of of course, of course, like every year, there are some there. You know, there are some people who didn't get in that I really do think deserved to get in. Um. Uh, I do, I like, for Best Picture, I know I, I do like most of, most of the nominees, a couple of them, a couple of them I have question marks next to, but, um, but, but we, we can get into that later on, but, um, but, you know, in, in, in general, like, I, like, I'm pretty happy with them, you know, like, like, like usual, some snubs, some surprises, so, so, yeah. So, uh, are you in the Jimmy Kimmel camp of, like, why the hell's Don't Look Up nominated for Best Picture but not Spider Man? I I did I didn't know he had it. I I didn't know he was having an issue with that. But but I mean I, I'm I'm surprised Don't Look Up got got nominated. Uh, I, I I mean I mean I I have you know I'll admit I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. It it's only it's only one of one of two. Best Picture nominees I haven't seen yet. The, the other one being Drive My Car, which is going to hit HBO Max next month. So I'm, ha yep, I'm happy. There you go. I'm happy about that. But um, I don't know. Don't look up. I remember seeing the full trailer for it, and I'm. I thought to myself, every every self indulgence that Adam McKay used for Vice seems even more so in this in this movie. Like like he he was able to. To keep it on like a good level in in the big short, but then Vice he 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 amped he amped it up to an, an annoying degree, and now Don't Look Up seems to follow that seems to follow that, that same trajectory, which is interesting because like I feel like Don't Look Up is one of like from all of his like bold and out of the box like storytelling techniques. I feel like it's his most out of the three of them. It's its most straightforward, like told film. Okay, it's just it's just like two hours and twenty minutes of endless, just like how many jokes we can throw in here about this situation and stuff like that. And yeah, that's what I've heard about it. To me, it just kind of felt underdone, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are like, I've seen this joke on Twitter before, and that's that's a challenging thing with comedy it's like if the comedy doesn't feel fresh then you just kind of left like oh i've heard this joke before and i felt that a lot watching but like i thought it was enjoyable but i guess it's just solidifying that academy loves adam mckay apparently i guess so <laughs> i guess so <laughs> and my overall th feelings were i liked most of the categories i feel like they messed up a lot with the acting categories and there's a few films that got way more love than they deserved and also a couple of head scratching nominations for performances i didn't expect to get any love at all to be honest but like well, it, they were respectable and I'm kind of like, I can't be mad at them, but I feel like there's better and very obvious better nominees. 
Well, in terms of the acting categories, um, I, I still have to see, I still, I, I still, I still have to see being the Ricardos. So, you know, Nicole Kidman, Javier Bardem, J.K. Simmons. I have to see the Lost Daughter. So, Olivia Coleman and Jesse Buckley. And then I, I have to see, uh, Parallel Mothers for uh, uh, Penelope Cruz. Well, and I was very specifically talking about being the Ricardos because I'm like. I, I, I figure that's who, that's who you were aiming for. <laughs> First off, in what world does Harvey... Are, well, here's the thing. Obviously, and how did they get all these ask, uh, like acting nominations and Swerkin didn't get one nomination? I'm just a little surprised about that. Because well, obviously I, the Academy loved this movie. Well, I mean, I heard, I heard his script wasn't that great. I'm just surprised it was Sorkin, <laughs> like, that he didn't get some kind of love. But, like, his actor sure did. And, like, I love J.K. Simmons, and he wasn't really entertaining in that movie. But, like, he got nominated over, like, Jamie Dornan, who I thought was great in Belfast. Yes. And I feel bad because, like, Jamie Dornan finally had his opportunity to be taken seriously because, you know, he is the dude from Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm -hmm. So, and it was just like, he should have been nominated for an Oscar for that. And that would have been crazy if J.K. Simmons didn't get that and they had two movies with double nominations. Because I didn't expect Jesse Plemons to get nominated either. You, you, you know what? I... Even though he didn't receive many of the big nominations leading up to the Oscars, I felt like I felt like the love for Power of the Dog became like, like became so high that I, I had a feeling that that he would be able to ride some of that goodwill into a surprise nomination. And he got it. kind of like. Kind of like uh, Jackie Weaver did 10 years ago for uh, uh, Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah, it's like nominate all. All yep. of you get it. <laughs> and like Javier Bardem, that was the, uh, out of all the acting ones, to be perfectly frank, I think that was the biggest head scratcher for me. I'm just like, and also I thought it was weird casting. Cause like, I love Javier Bardem, he's a great actor. But I don't once look at him or hear him and think, oh, that's Desi Arnaz. <laughs> and it was a very interesting thing to watch him in that movie. And because, like, I love, I watched I Love Lucy a lot. And I don't know. And especially when you could have easily nominated, you know, Nick Cage for Pig or Leo for Don't Look Up or Bradley or Cooper for Nightmare Alley. Or, or or Dev Patel for the Green Knight. That too. Green Knight getting zero love made me I, so sad. I, I, I was I was I was furious at that. They they could have all, easily got nominated for like production design and costumes and ma makeup. Yes. Like the actual Green Knight? Like what the F? Oh and and, and also um you know what? You know what? As as much as I love, like, as as much as I love, like, the um, all the attention that that inter that international cinema received outside of the foreign language category, because you know, like, you know, you know, like, you know, like, like, flee outside of outside of foreign language film, it received um, best best animated film and best documentary. Um, worst person in the world. Although that wasn't nominated for um, best for a language film, it still received that that original screenplay nomination, which it definitely deserved. Um, drive, drive my car outside of four language. That got um, picture, uh, picture, picture director okay. ad adapted screenplay, and then Parallel Mothers. I don't think that was nominated in foreign language film, but that got a surprise. Uh, best actress nomination so so you know you know like like this despite me being happy with with all the attention th those those movies received outside of the best foreign language film category how could you not nominate a hero for like 
how? So like, like, how, how, like how was so how was best international film not a fight between drive my car worst person in the world a hero and i would even throw um titan out there which i ha- i haven't I, ha- I haven't seen titan so i so i can't i can't really say anything for which it. the oscars were like <laughs> like <laughs> no well well that 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 didn't make the shortlist, right? No, it didn't even make the shortlist, which boggled my mind. And then that yak better be great. <laughs> Was that the international film category that that uh, movie about a yak got nominated? I think so. Yeah. Uh, if this turns into my octopus teacher all over again... <laughs> Where it's like some random movie about an animal wins a big category at the Oscars out of nowhere. I'm just but, gonna be like, what the? Heck? But, but but I mean, like how how could like how could how could you not even nominate a hero for original screenplay? This like, could have easily been one of the strongest years and Parallel Mothers, easily the strongest, most stacked foreign language like international film category. And somehow it didn't. <laughs> like, it missed out on a bunch of movies. Um, which is so interesting. Going back to the best actor, I would have even taken the lead actor and drive my car over Javier Bardem. So I have, obviously, a lengthy list of actors who should have been nominated over that over Bardem. And I was shocked Gaga didn't get nominated. What... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Which that was that was surprising because I think I think she was because uh, you you know like best actress that was like a really that was a really like competitive category this year and she was the only one I think to receive nominations in in all of the big ceremonies but then once the Oscars were announced she was nowhere to be seen I I, I still haven't seen House of Gucci though. And the Oscars are like, buy House of Gucci, <laughs> which they probably should have. Um, because what did it get hair and makeup or costumes or something? Which that's fine. I, I they think deserve I that. But like <laughs> them not giving Jared Leto a nomination, I'm like, thank God. Well, it's well, it's kind of funny because like because 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 last year too, Jared Leto received a few high profile nominations for the little things, but then he didn't receive um, an Oscar nomination. Because the Oscars aren't getting fooled. (laughs) Not getting fooled this time. Um, Because like he deserved that recognition for Dallas Buyers Club. Yes. But like they're not pulling a, because like I felt like Sam Rockwell hit a stride where they just gave him, like him getting nominated for like Vice was stupid. The, the, that what well, 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 you, you know what he was good in Vice, but 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 I'll I'll I'll, I'll admit that nomination was that nomination was a little was a little puzzling. Yeah, um, trying to think like Jesse Buckley was a pleasant surprise because I love Jesse Buckley. Well, well, well I re- well I, I read like a lot of people have had had support for her to go to to like get into the, the nominees, and she did, and. Um, Sorry, Dame Judy Dench. The wrong supporting actress got nominated for Belfast. I I was where the hell's Katrina Balfe? I was very surprised with her oh. with her lack of a nomination. I like when I did my own awards, I easily handed best supporting actress to Katrina Balfe because she was that great in Belfast. Everybody for the most part was that great in Belfast. And like I just felt like Jamie Dornan and Katrina Bauf got sadly just overlooked. And but what do, what do you think? What do you think of Kieran Hines' nomination? Oh, that was great. Yeah. Oh, him saying, "Wherever I wind up, you always find me," and it just brought like almost tears to my eyes mm-hmm. every time I thought about it after watching that movie the the whole cast was unbelievably delightful in that movie and yes. charming as hell and it's, it's especially um jude hill yeah which 
should they just you know make a young actors category like at some point uh, i don't know but like he was great he carried that film really well did. and you know you know what film got no love for acting which i'm shocked about was licorice pizza literally yeah. none bradley cooper didn't even get his like crazy weird best supporting actor nomination that everybody thought he was gonna get i i definitely thought a lot a lot of high had it in for for best for for a best actress nomination which i would have easily kicked nicole kidman out for her yes sorry nicole kidman which i love the fact that penelope cruz got love for parallel mothers and I was going to be so mad if Kristen Stewart didn't even get nominated after those couple of snubs leading up to mm -hmm. the Oscar uh, nominations, because how, like, how would that even be possible that you overlook that performance? But, I mean, you know, they did uh, it. Well, well well, well, I mean, I mean, Spencer, Spencer was, Spencer was was my number one for twenty for twenty twenty one. So, I was, I was, I was gunning for for Kristen Stewart to get to get a nomination for that. Yeah, and I'm so glad that she did. And God, if Gaga got nominated over her, I'd have been so mad. <laughs> but you know, because I am in the camp that I thought Lady Gaga's performance was kind of a joke like I, I saw a lot of people like a lot of people were like it was amazing she's snubbed and i'm like did we watch the same movie well, she had a I, russian accent i, and I was a caricature the whole entire time I, I i mean i've i've heard a lot a lot of mixed things about about her performance because the thing well, is like 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 so, like so some people said it was really good some some people said it was like too campy like the vocal coach on the film even said that her accent was Russian, but like they couldn't do anything about it. They kind of just went with it. I'm like, what? <laughs> and uh, just like, are you kidding me? Um, but it's probably one of the most shocking categories probably was director. Because you know, worst, worst Denis Villeneuve, you know, and like especially especially how how that 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 not that novel is like notoriously unfilmable, and a lot Denis of people failed and, to make it, and and Denis Villeneuve just went full in with it with his with his vision, and how like how could you not how could you not nominate him how did you give it 10 nominations for mostly technical things and then be like you know what eh, directing wasn't that great <laughs> like what <laughs> like i like i don't think for me personally cuz did it get any did it get adapted screenplay yes, or anything yeah yeah it did i would have passed over that <laughs> personally seeing as like it was there there was a lot of heavy lifting and exposition and stuff like that for it and just you know for me the biggest thing was I kind of felt like it didn't feel like a whole movie and but like I was in that camp with it but like I never once looked at that movie and didn't think my god Denis Villeneuve is a genius and well, you know the Oscars looked at it and were like yeah no nah. Well, who, well, who knows? Maybe, it, maybe if if Dune Part Two is as, is as well is as well received as as Part One, like maybe they'll give him a nomination for that to like to encompass both parts. Pull the Lord of the Rings BS, where they're like, we're only going to give the first two movies minimal nominations, and then well, get to well, the. Well, 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 well. Fellowship, Fellowship of the Ring received like four, like fourteen nominations. It was, it was, it was the two towers that that received only like maybe five or six. I'm checking that because because be, because I remember Peter Jackson receiving a, a best director nomination for that for 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 Fellowship. To two thousand one, I have the Oscar website up.
I clicked on 2001, thank you, not 2021. <laughs> Stupid Oscar website. It's an obnoxious scroll. Because, <laughs> let's see. But it got one act. So the whole entire trilogy only got one acting nomination. And that yeah, was Ian McKellen for, the, for, for fel- Fellowship. fellowship. Um, didn't get art direction. Fellowship didn't get art direction. Didn't get cinematography. No, fe- Fellowship. Fellowship won cinema. Fellowship won cinematography, score, art, direct- art, art direction, and makeup. Yeah. I need to check something real quick. Um, they're doing it by the year of the ceremony and not the actual year of oh let's do this again so okay we're in the right year because shrek won best animated feature 2001 Mm -hmm. there you go um art direction fellowship to get nominated so in harry potter what a year also so i'm gonna sound like an ass here but um, Return of the King should have had 12 Oscars because how the hell did that not win cinematography and didn't even get nominated? I keep forgetting it didn't get nominated for cinematography. Andrew Lesney, Lesney got screwed. Um, like, I thought it got like five nominations. But I'm looking here, there's a decent amount. One makeup. Because how did it not, to be honest? One score, how did it, how won the pad? Well, one score. Oh, 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 and, oh and, it, and it won, it won visual, oh, and it won visual effects. It got score, it got score, makeup, visual effects, and cinematography. So oh, I stand corrected. Poor oh, Two Towers is the sad middle child. Oh, because, <laughs> because, oh, no, because no, you know what? M- Moulin Rouge got. Art direction and costume design over over fellowship. Yeah, but, but yeah, you know, Harry like, Potter. But, but, any but other know, year, Sorcerer's Stone would have gotten like a ton of <laughs> ton of Oscars. But for, you like, know, technical that, stuff, and then like Lord of the Rings, like psh, nope. But you know what? That is weird. How the two towers received the least nom- like the least amount of nominations out and of three of them. To be honest, I think most people argue that's the best one. I've, I've I've heard I've heard people say that, and you know, I love Chicago. I still haven't seen it. I got I gotta uh, watch I, I gotta watch it at some point. But I'm like, no. But anyway, back to this yes. year's Oscars. Yes. I feel like I was I was really happy with the love that the international films were getting. It was really interesting. Um, Flea, what a what a feat yes that and like realistically to be honest i don't know if i would have given it the international film nomination because how stacked the not uh, like how many great films there were that was the hard one but like hands down easy that should have been nominated for animation and documentary like easy and like that would be great if it ends up winning animated film, especially because how you, you know you know not not that not that I have an issue with this, but you know just like you know animated film typically goes more towards like a family friendly movie, so it would it would be interesting to have a movie like Flea end up winning that award. And I don't think across the board this year's animated feature. Oscar category is the strongest. I think like, the, I love Mitchell's versus the machines. I I didn't see that. I I think the I think the only other I think I saw Encanto, Luca, and Flea. I I haven't seen Mitchell versus the machines or what, what's what's the fifth nominee? Um, Raya and the Last Dragon. Oh, I saw I saw that. Oh, oh, oh okay, so. so I saw so Mitchell Mitchell versus the Machines is the only nominee that, that I haven't seen. Honestly, and I think that's the best one outside of Flea. I was shocked. Like shocked watching that on Netflix. I'm just like, this movie has no business 
being this good. It gave me a lot of Lego movie vibes of like this movie does not this should not work this well. Oh, um, oh, is it oh, is it from Phil Lord and Chris Miller? I don't know if they directed it, but they were involved in it. Okay. And you could feel it too. Um, but I Overall, I'm like, I looked at the best picture nominations, and I feel like I only take one out that I don't think would have at least been worthy of consideration, and that's Don't Look Up. Okay. And I could have picked, like, I would have put Spencer way, way above that. Well, and well, well, of all of all the best picture of all the best picture nominees. The 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 only the only ones that the only ones that appeared on my top ten were Dune and, and West Side Story. I'm gonna confirm mine. Uh, Belfast, Power of the Dog. Oh oh and oh and Bel, 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 well Belfast yeah we have Belfast as well so it was for me Belfast West Side Story and Dune. Tragedy Tragedy and Macbeth got nominated right. Not for best picture, mm. best actor, best actor. I think best actor, cinematography, and art direction. And let let me just say, pretty much any movie can win cinematography this year, and I'll be and I'll be happy, because those are five stellar nominees for cinematography. And the Green Knight didn't even get nominated. <laughs> no, it, which that is. I hope that was it, Dobonel who did um tragedy macbeth yeah i hope that wins and and you know what i'm sorry to keep coming back to spencer but how did how did that not get a cinematography nomination i don't know and if it wasn't for power of the dog it would have got a score one you you know like johnny greenwood yeah, beat himself so you, you know you know what i liked johnny greenwood's score in power of the dog but i felt like his score for got under your skin especially in the scene like that first dinner that that first dinner scene and like it just like like the score just gets louder and louder and just makes you feel oh god i just feel like if dune doesn't win anything that has to do with sound something's wrong so like i feel like han zimmer's gonna win that oscar for score and if that doesn't win sound i don't know what they're doing well, Honestly. I well, I mean, I think at this point, it's it's obviously it's obviously winning visual effects, and I'm happy because like Spider Man got nominated, right? Yeah, there's some there's way too much iffy green screen in that movie for my taste for that to get nominated. But like, I don't think this was the strongest year for, for vis- visual for- effects, to be honest, because like. Well, I'll try. I'll try to think. I'll try to think what else I saw besides doing that could, that could have been like good for vis- for visual effects. Because like Free Guy got nominated, which I think it does a really nice job of pulling all that um, virtual uh, video game world together. Um, Shang Chi, for the most part, there's definitely some ragdolling moments and stuff like that that stick out. Um, but like. Outside of Infinity War and Endgame, I don't think uh, Marvel movies really should get visual effect, like win visual effects Oscars because like, oh, there's just too much of like really obnoxious and obvious green screen in a lot of them. Nothing once in Dune made me like, you know what, that looks like a visual effect. Mm-hmm. That place looked real. All of those planets looked real. Yeah. Everything looked real. And how much of that was in camera was just absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. So, like, generally, I'm not the one f- that, like, is like, I'm st- still hurt about Fury Road not winning best visual effects because of Ex Machina. But, like, Ex Machina did it on a much more subtle scale. And I feel like that's what Dune does, except there's a lot more special effects in Dune, obviously. Well, well wasn't. Well, Fury, Fury Road not winning visual effects. I mean, wasn't wasn't a lot of it like in wasn't a lot of it like in like in camera like 
there's so many so much cgi in that movie that you can't even tell huh you should watch behind the scenes videos of it uh, 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 oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah 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 like i'm i'm sure like i'm sure there's some cgi in it but i just remember when it came out you know there were all these articles saying like like just how much how much of it was at was actually like like pra- like practical effects and who's to say visual effects have to be computer generated that's true you know what that's true and i think that's a i feel like also let's be frank here this is also the academy that didn't give planet of the apes any and they literally made apes that looked real yeah true so i'm not exactly the most trustworthy of visual effects oscars but like dune better win because if dune doesn't win they're smoking something well okay so for for the for the planet for, for the planet of the apes movies Okay, so Rise lost against Hugo for vi- for visual effects. That one that one puzzled me. However, Dawn of, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, great visual effects, but that lost to Interstellar, which I I understand. Like Interstellar had had all the effects uh, had had amazing amazing visuals, and then. And then War for, War for the Planet of the Apes, again, great, great visuals, but then you had Blade Runner 2049. Which, how, how could you not give it that? How could you not give 2049 visual effects? That's a, and that's the thing. It's like, what do you give it to? The world that they created? Because like, I feel like both Interstellar and Blade Runner are definitely like the worlds they created. But like... I don't know if there's any visual effects that are more photorealistic actual beings than Planet of the Apes. And like prob like maybe because like like pirates with like Davy Jones, which is from like the mid 2000s still looks amazing. It does. And maybe Thanos. That's basically it. And they didn't like the like Endgame and Infinity War didn't even win, which shocked the hell out of me too. Um, I think did Dunkirk beat one of them? I'm trying to remember. Did, D- D- Dunkirk wasn't up for vi- Dunkirk wasn't up for visual effects. 1917 was up. For, 1917 was up for visual effects two years later, and and, and it won. That's what won. Um, I think that beat Infinity War or Endgame, and I'm just and like it beat it beat Endgame. Just like, I don't know. So I guess I just have a lot of problems with who they wind up giving visual effects to. But in general, this wasn't a strong year. And if Dune doesn't win, there's something wrong. D- Dune, Dune has it. Dune has it in the bag at this point. And if Dune doesn't win most of like, like well, a well, lot of those technical awards, I'm gonna be shocked. Well, well Dune, look, Dune, look, like even in a even in a stronger year, I think it would still end up winning. Mm-hmm. Which. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that upset me. Um, I was a little sad. Well, and Kanto still got original song nomination. I was just surprised it wasn't. We don't talk about Bruno. I don't know why Disney didn't submit that one for song. It's literally the most successful song they've had since Pocahontas. Like, it's more popular than Let It Go. It, oh, it, it has reached that level of popularity at this point. It is the most popular song they've had since uh, Pocahontas in 1995. Huh. And they didn't even put that up for an Oscar. But I don't know. Oh, and another, another disappointing snub. How did no one get nominated for Mass? Nobody. Like, nobody saw Mass. <laughs> That's what it seems like. Like, I feel like that's the only way they didn't nominate any of them for that movie. It's just like most of the body didn't even watch the movie. It's a, because it's a, it's a if shame. you watch that movie, how do you not nominate somebody? Like, in a world where we could have got Jarrett Leto for Best Supporting Actor, how's Jason Isaacs not get nominated for Best Supporting Actor? <laughs> or, or Ann Dowd for Supporting Actress. Yeah crazy 
You know, you know what was an inter- what was an interesting nomination, which 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 is deserved, was um the the editing nomination for Tick Tick Boom. Yes, because and... after because I because I rewatched I rewatched some of its um musical numbers and and you know what the editing really is like an, an amazing aspect for the for for that for that movie is it's especially um especially in like the duet between andrew garfield and uh evanessa hudgens i i, I, I love that scene so much like i i, I can't you know i i you know it bothers me because I, I i watched it a few days ago but i i can't remember i can't remember the the name the name of the song, but I mean you obviously know which one I'm I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. If the editing wasn't great, that movie would work. No. Like, there's too much energy for that not to like. If you edit that poorly, it would not have anywhere near as much energy as it did. Yeah. And I don't know. I could have seen Lin Manuel Miranda getting nominated for best director for Tick, Tick, Boom, because that was something special. It was. Honest. And, the, you know, the directing category is tough. And obviously the spoiler there was the director of Drive My Car. Mm-hmm. Because, like, who else got nominated? Um, Steve uh, Campion 100% was getting nominated. Yep, Steve Spielberg, Spielberg got nominated. Uh, Kath brought up. Kenneth Branagh, and this is like a special year for Kenneth Branagh. So, and Paul Thomas Anderson, which maybe take PTA out. The internet's going to hate me. (laughs) The internet loves Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, But the thing is, like, I don't know. If I had to pick anybody, because, like, I've seen Drive My Car. That was an impeccable film. I, 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 I I have yet to see it. Like, I don't know. I probably would have taken Paul Thomas Anderson out for somebody because like kudos to Steven Spielberg for making, maybe making West Side Story better. Mm -hmm. The original movie, which how, that's a feat in itself. It it really is. So, I don't know. It's, I know I'm surprised like Power of the Dog has a lot more mixed reactions than I thought it did. Um, I know some people hated it. Like, Matt. <laughs> Matt's not a fan. Okay, um, well, well, hey, you know, it's, 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 his, it's his opinion, so. That's very true. I've had a couple of conversations with a few people that were just like, they didn't, just didn't get it, didn't get the appeal of it. And it was one of those films where, like, when the credits started rolling, it all, like, clicked in my head. I'm like, what did I just watch? Mm-hmm. Um. But Vinny, any other last minute comments about our nominations from this year? Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I, pr- I mean, I pretty much said everything I, I, w- I wanted to say, but uh, it's all good. So let's send the people home happy. Yeah. Give best picture to either Coda or Belfast. And we all feel good because <laughs> the Coda would be like the most feel good underdog story ever it in would. that one best picture. And I have to say, I absolutely love that movie. And Troy Kotzer definitely deserved that best supporting actor nomination. He, d- he did. And I really wish Amelia Jones had received a best actress nomination. I would even have thrown Marley Matlin in there yes. too for best supporting actress. That was that was just a great movie. It really I was. was. Ap- Apple was smart. They're like, um, I'm gonna take that. Thank you. <laughs> so well, yeah. well, Apple, well, Apple films with both that and Macbeth, like they had, you know, they they had they had a good year. They sure did. And Macbeth like popped in right at the end. Uh, a small part of me is just like. Um, Joel Cohen. But obviously I'm extremely biased as a huge fan of both Cohen brothers. 
Um, I'm surprised Francis McDormand did get nominated. I, w- like, I wish I wish she did, or or a Ka- and Catherine Hunter as the as the witch. That the witch too. Is. That that was sad that she didn't get recognition. But it was, you know like what she was able to do with her body in that movie, like like that like that was that was she should have won the best supporting actress nom- Oscar just because Andy Serkis didn't get any recognition for playing a similar role in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> when she first popped up on screen, I'm just like, Gollum? <laughs> um, but my, my last thought is Frances McDormand deserved a nomination strictly for that side eye that she gets. Yes. It's yes. <laughs> a Washington, 100%, one look, Oscar nomination. Bam, yep. there it is. The, the, uh, like, like that's like like just that 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 would be her Oscar clip. Yes, just that side eye. Close the door. Boom. No, it's like clip it, over. It's 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 like you know the, you know they're, they're listing the, the, the nominees during the show. Francis, Francis McDormand, the tragedy of Macbeth. <laughs> that's it. Side eye. <laughs> And on that note, so those are my and Vinny's thoughts on the Oscar nominations for this year. And obviously, we went on tangents about special effects in Lord of the Rings. What a surprise. Because how, um, could, you, how could you not? So uh, all of you out there, throw your comments in. What are your thoughts? Who do you think got snubbed? Are you in the Gaga camp? Are you very angry? Are you also along with like everybody else? It's like, what were they smoking when they didn't nominate Denis Villeneuve? I don't know, but leave your comments below. But Vinny, thanks again for coming on Wasteland Talks this week. Always a pleasure. And thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.